Sigma Tiger News all up in your grill. Hot juicy beef being served three days a week. We've got pork problems. Woman beater Doug, adulterer. Garth Brooks rapist and potential serial killer? Maybe it was Chris Gaines. <laughs> TGIF, right off the hops. What's going on? We got the weekend ahead of us. Let's see what we got popping off. Is the port open? Port worker strike, demand higher wages and resist automation of jobs. So that's the whole deal. They just want to make sure that they're going to have a job and uh, the robots aren't going to come in and take over. So let's see, for the first time since 1977, almost 50,000 port workers and members of the International Longshoremen's Association went on strike Tuesday. The negotiation represents a contract dispute between the ILA and the United States Marine Time Alliance. The previously negotiated master contract represented a six-year term, 2018 to 2024, that expired September 30th. Contract negotiations began in February 2023, so they've been talking for quite a while. Quite the impasse, Harold Daggett ended the talks prematurely, asserting that the USMX companies allegedly violated its agreement, promising not to automate human jobs. Of course they did. They're like, oh, you got AI that can literally do what humans do now, and you got a robot arm that'll lift up all the stuff? Yeah, done. We're doing it. Hired. Uh, USMX states on its website that it has already successfully negotiated 10 new contracts with ILA without coastwide work stoppage. Okay, well... Uh, yeah, so there's a dozen, three dozen ports, Boston, New York, New Jersey, Philadelphia, Wilmington, North Carolina, Baltimore, Norfolk, Charleston, Savannah, Jacksonville, Tampa, Miami, New Orleans, Mobile, Houston. White House officials say the president does not plan to step in to help negotiate and the strike. Dock workers can earn more than $200,000 a year, but the work involves the dangerous and physically exhausting job of moving containers on and off vessels. Okay, yeah, well, $200,000 sounds quite good. Well, uh, yeah, so here's the deal. The International Longshoremen's Association and the United States Maritime Alliance Limited have reached a tentative agreement on wages and have agreed to extend the master contract until January 15th, 2025. 90 days. Basically, it's like if Biden stepped in and was like, okay, I'm forcing you back to work, this is exactly what would happen. You have 90 days to sort it out. If not, then what? They're still not going to go back to work. During the week's strike had already started, the U.S. stressed the U.S. supply chain. Thousands of containers have been dumped at the wrong ports, and billions of dollars in goods were anchored offshore because ports were not operational. Trains also stopped taking uh, stuff the day before the strike, Monday. They are like, we're not taking anything because we're afraid it's going to get stuck on the trains. Not doing it. All right. Uh, the union initially demanded 77% pay rise over six years, citing inflation and years of minimal increases. According to President Harold Daggett, ILA members earn a base salary of about 81, base, annually, with some exceeding 200,000 due to overtime. Okay, 81,000. Like, that's like a modest salary. It's pretty good. I Like, you know, anyone would be happy with that amount. If you're single, not if you have a family and you had to drive an hour to work every day. On Monday evening, the Alliance countered with a 50% raise over six years and promised to maintain existing limits on automation. Okay, we hear what you're saying about the robots. Well, we don't want to give you that much money, though. It's too much for us. The exact gap between two sides remains unclear. Well, they came to some sort of agreement. We'll check back January uh, 16th and let you know if the ports are closed. All right, port fallout strike blockbuster weight loss drug supply. So this is what CNBC decides this is news. Guess what? You can't lose all that fat. You can't have diarrhea and get skinny now. Too bad, people. Celebrities. Oh, no. Like, who cares? That's not important. Uh, all right, well, here's something interesting. Scientists have known for years that sugar is highly addictive. Yeah, absolutely. That's why it's in everything. It's also factual that despite being in almost all products consumed today, the body needs no added sugars. Hmm, interesting. We don't need it. We just crave it and desire it for its delicious uh, additive 
flavoring, meaning those that aren't naturally occurring to survive, right? So fruits that have fruit in it, that's good. We don't need added sugar. Maybe on a grapefruit, a little sprinkle. They're pretty sour. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration FDA classifies added sugar as generally recognized as safe grass. We covered this last time. Uh, yet evidence has existed for decades proving that even for relatively short periods of a child's life, elevated blood sugars are unsuitable for a growing skeleton. Bones, after all, are recognized as an endocrine organ that serves not only as a structural scaffold to support the human body, which most people think it's just there to hold us up. No, way more intricate uh, mechanism to bones. Uh, it also serves as a regulator of several metabolic processes independent of mineral metabolism, including modulating of glucose tolerance and testosterone production by secretion of a bone-specific protein called osteocalcin. Okay, so what exactly is osteocalcin? And why isn't it talked about besides regulating energy metabolism and male fertility? Osteocalcin found exclusively in bone tissue and highly conserved among species affects brain development and functions. Scientists have known for years that after birth, osteocalcin favors neurotransmitter synthesis and postnatal neurogenesis, prevents anxiety and depression behaviors, and enhances spatial learning and memory. Without getting too technical, osteocalcin is a 49 amino acid peptide secreted by osteoblasts into the bone matrix and the blood. Vitamin K and D dependent studies show the protein plays a role in the building bone matrix, and once secreted in the bloodstream, it acts as a pancreatic B cells to enhance insulin secretion and thus has profound influence on glucose and energy metabolism. So, introducing sugar into your life will just, you know, cause your body to react poorly. Introducing into children could cause neurodegenerative problems. Possibly. Could also cause stunting of growth, potentially. Uh, inadequate testosterone production. Hmm, that's interesting. There's a rise in um, LGBTQ plus and all that over the past 40 years. Perhaps it's simply just sugar. I think there's more to it than that. School teaches us that blood glucose or blood sugar is the principal sugar in our blood and the body's primary source of energy coming from the foods we eat. The blood breaks down most of that food into glucose and releases it into the bloodstream. When blood, blood glucose goes up, it signals to the pancreas to release insulin, which is a hormone that helps glucose enter the cells to be used for energy. Of course, diabetes is a disease in which blood glucose levels are too high and the body either doesn't make enough insulin or can't use it as well as it should or both. Complications from diabetes, which is the eighth leading cause of death in the United States, can cause serious health problems. High blood glucose from diabetes can damage blood vessels and the nerves that control the heart and blood vessels. Over time, this damage can lead to heart disease, which is the number one cause of death. So it's not fat, like we talked about. It's not fat at all. It's sugar. Sugar is the number one problem. And guess why? Because there's sugar lobbyists that get in there, into the government, wine and dine everyone with steaks and strippers and whatever, and then uh, they're like, sugar's pretty good, you know. I mean, like, added sugar's not that bad. It's pretty good. Sugar's good. Sugar's fine. It's not sugar. It's, uh, we have medicine. We have medicine for that. Anyway, whatever. Psychologist 53 who worked at Tavistock Clinic remains free to practice despite being caught grooming a schoolboy 15 for sex in a park. What? How is that even possible? Well, it's Europe. It's UK specifically. They're totally done. They're done in. They're done. Don't, literally, the only thing saving them will be the Muslims taking over and implementing Sharia law and ending the nonsense that's going on. Not that it's going to be a good thing, but it's probably the only way to save these nations. Uh, unless Christians decide to get a backbone and stand up and stop turning the other cheek. It's fine to turn the other cheek. It's important to do that in like daily activities, but not when someone's trying to like steal your children. You don't turn the other cheek then. You killed a person thou shalt not murder when it's justified it's totally fine it's not murder and god's okay with that if someone comes into your house and tries to, to kill your kids or kill you and you kill them god's fine with that it's a fact dr ross canad was entrusted to treat youngsters mental health as lead psychologist at tavistock and portman nhs foundation trust which became infamous for its gender clinic helping children to transition to a different sex canad was snared by a group of self-styled pedophile hunters in an online uh, sting after he sent sexually explicit messages to a youngster who told him he was age 15. Boom. And guess what? 
They were ambushed by members of the vigilante group posing as friends of the youngster who had been monitoring their interactions, the court heard. But guess what? Oh, no. Is this entrapment? Uh, no, he didn't lose his job, apparently. He's still working there and, and uh, helping the uh, children. Kanad pled guilty on July 29 to attempting to meet a child following sexual grooming. On Monday, he was handed a 12-month suspended sentence by a judge, Wood Green Crown Court. Uh, although he was spared jail, he was sacked by Tavistock. Okay. So, the hospital sacked him. Great. However, the mail can reveal that despite his conviction for child sex offenses, Dr. Kanad has not been suspended by the regulator which oversees his profession. So, like, in Canada, they have the College of uh, Physicians and Surgeons, or Surgeon Physician, whatever it's called. Like it's an overseeing body, a regulating group. Well, the care Health and Care Professionals Council, he remains registered to practice. No problem. Go ahead. Trump assassination attempts Secret Service to face new lawsuit over DEI quota. Yeah, the former, uh, what is it, uh, leader, I can't remember her name, Kim, Kim's Angels. Nonprofit Defending Women's Issues plans to sue the U.S. Secret Service for what it alleges as an arbitrary diversity, equity, and inclusion DEI initiative that harms female employees. The proposed lawsuit from the Independent Women's Forum comes for more than two months after some pointed fingers at the female USS agents assigned to former President Trump's detail at his July 13th presidential campaign in Raleigh Butler, uh, Pennsylvania, when a 20-year-old shooter gained access to a nearby rooftop, shot at Trump automatic rifle yeah so they're saying like you know when they fumbled and bumbled you know the problem is is were they qualified did they have to meet the same stringent uh criteria and threshold to make it into uh such an elite group of um security i think not we saw it if you watch the show uh, yeah, so uh, Kim Cheadle, there it is, Cheadle's Angels, uh, took this very seriously. We know she made hiring decisions based on this. 30% female workforce, 30 by 30 pledge that various law enforcement agencies have taken with a goal to reach 30% female workforce. And that's great. I don't have a problem with working with females or females having jobs and all that. I'm not one of these trad dudes who's like, gotta be in the kitchen only, making sandwiches, dusting and cleaning, preparing me for kids. I'm having kids, so get ready whatever it's not like that women can do whatever they want i don't care but to put women in positions of authority that's fine too there's a lot of women who can make good decisions and be leaders but what about when physicality is 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 part of it like protecting somebody right it's different it's different well here there here's a playlist you can actually find this female cops are dangerous to all i'm not sure i did agree with that but anyway this is by testing 2741 and uh just have a look here let's just zoom in and have a look at some of these uh names here we got black female officer arrested for attempted murder and excessive force okay while well, she's trying uh good samaritan takes down man allegedly assaulting female cop cop begs for her life after fugitive pulls out gun Brave Good Samaritan helps two female cops. Suspect knocks female officer unconscious and continues to beat her. Female cops are the worst owned and schooled. Uh, Dallas police officer fatally shoots neighbor after entering wrong apartment. New Jersey affirmative action female cop overpowered in police station by criminal who takes gun. Problems with female police officers. Female officers fight for fights over gun with suspect. Woman shouldn't be cops. Useless female cops get owned. I mean, we kind of got to look at that, don't we? Hopefully we don't get jacked with a commercial here. Anyway, dude man's pants are falling down. He's still able to outrun the, uh, the, uh, chunky cop. I mean, and that's the other side, the weight issue. Man or woman, it doesn't matter. If you're out there trying to serve and protect and, uh, you're chubby and you can't run, it's a problem. Something called pair test. And it's like five minutes. You gotta run around. The obstacles. And you just run this relay and then you have to do this, like, exercise thing where you're squat down super difficult i did it 
did make it by like seven seconds. And that was off the couch. I'd like to see some of these cops try that. Anyway, VP Harris's husband accused of physically assaulting an ex-girlfriend. Report, and here he is. Mm. Here it is. Uh, Vice President Kamala Harris's husband has been accused of physically assaulting an ex-girlfriend, according to a new report. Second gentleman Doug Imhoff is accused of slapping a former girlfriend in May 2012. Three sources claim. All right, more than one. In the Bible, you just need two witnesses to help confirm your story. The alleged incident occurred while the couple was attending an event at the Cannes Film Festival in France. Three friends of the woman, who is a successful New York attorney, claim that Emhoff hit her so hard in the face that she turned around while standing in the valet line. That's a heavy slap. Second gentleman Doug Emhoff accused of physically assaulting his ex-girlfriend days after MSNBC host Jim Psaki said Emhoff was reshaping masculinity, yeah, by taking uh, a back seat to uh, his wife being the center stage uh, candidate running for president, like whatever, he's second man, whatever, stupid. According to Daily Mail, Emhoff hit a woman so hard that she physically spun around. Yeah, we recovered that. All right, so whatever. So what do they say? His rep denies the claim. Didn't happen. No way. This report is untrue. Any suggestion that he would ever hit a woman is false. Even a suggestion. Not even. So, good lawyer. There you go. Uh, one of the women's friends told the outlet uh, that she called him sobbing after the attack. Mm. It was hard to hear her. She told me she was with a guy and he hit her. Huh. I didn't know what to do. I don't know whether to call the French police. I couldn't get a hold of her after calling back. I mean, that's the witness, is it? Anyway, uh, developing story. Well, uh, ouch, Kamala. This video has 13 million views. So what's she doing uh, with regards to keeping people safe? Let's have a look. ...with murdering 12-year-old Jocelyn Nongarai. I know what a crime looks like. And I will tell you, an undocumented immigrant is not a criminal. Just days ago, another undocumented immigrant from Ecuador was arrested in New York City, accused of raping a 13-year-old girl in broad daylight. An undocumented immigrant is not a criminal, and we have to correct course on this conversation in our country. An undocumented immigrant from El Salvador was arrested in Oklahoma. Police say he raped and murdered Rachel Morin, a mother of five, from Maryland. I know what a crime looks like. An undocumented immigrant is not a criminal. An undocumented immigrant is not a criminal, and we have to correct course in this conversation. An undocumented immigrant is not a criminal, and we have to correct course on this conversation in our country. I know what a crime looks like. Yeah, so do I, and it's called what's happening at the border. That's a fact. All right, um, crossings are down since Trump left office via Tim Walz. Here's uh, something proving him 100% incorrect. Hey, have a look at that. All right, so 2000. There we go. Trump was in. Well, it looks like there's more crossings than ever in history. Even when they came over from Europe, they didn't come over in this many numbers. Absolutely ridiculous. So Tim Waltz is a scumbag liar. All right, this guy here is legit. Okay, listen to this guy. Who is he? Uh, Captain Cal. He's running for uh, Senate, I believe. I'm not sure exactly. Just check it out. This guy's awesome. Drag queen to recruit for the Navy? That's not the people we want. What we need is alpha males and alpha females who are going to rip out their own guts, eat them, and ask for seconds. That, those are young men and women that are going to win wars. Uh, please. Please, audience, please. <laughs> please, audience, please. She's absolutely shocked with what he said. And uh, what else does he have to say? He just pulled out a hardcore zinger against this other fella. Check it out. There's two truths in the world, okay? Never walk in a Target store wearing a red shirt and never go against an Asian when it comes to math. Trust what? me. What? Just the, erupting the crowd. All right, well, the Ukraine gives us a sweet deal. What is what is that deal? Well, uh, we've given them billions and billions of dollars, of course, and uh, they give us one dead Russian soldier for every 20K spent. So there you go. That's the value of a Russian soldier's life to the U.S., 20 grand. 
A North Carolina mountain town is wrecked by Hurricane Helene. Yeah, we've been covering this. It's absolutely uh, devastating. Flattened homes, impassable roads, swamped fields, downed power lines, raw emotions. Nearly a week after Hurricane Helene pummeled this small t mountain town 20 miles east of Asheville, residents and business owners were trickling back Wednesday to see what was left and what could be salvaged. Uh, Beverly and Baxter Eller barely escaped the floodwaters that reached eye level as they fled their home of 37 years and drove off in search of higher ground, uncertain if they would ever return. When they did, they found their home surrounded by knee-high moat of muddy water. The garage lifted from its foundation and spun around. Ooh, yikes. Beverly Eller, 68, who has been staying in shelters the last few days, said she was surprised by the extent of the damage. I don't think anybody, including the government, thought that this was what we were going to get. The Ellers retrieved what they could from the now uninhabitable house, including family photos, mementos, most importantly, Christmas lights and ornaments that have been passed down for five generations. So important. Uh, the death toll from Hurricane Helene rose to 176 on Wednesday, and God rest all the lost souls. As President Joe Biden directed the Pentagon to deploy up to 1,000 active duty soldiers to North Carolina to help deliver food, water, and other supplies to isolated communities. Great. Good. Whatever. He flew to the state for a briefing at the Emergency Operations Center in Raleigh and was expected to survey the widespread damage. Uh, it's too much for me in terms of interrupting access to help there to land Nashville to survey the damage other uh, through the air. And uh, then it's my plan to travel to Georgia and Florida as soon as possible after that. Yeah, okay, sure. Whatever. Uh, we're going to every part of the community knocking on each door, asking if residents need anything or want to be evacuated. Some parts of our community are inaccessible due to roads being washed out. The infrastructure is gone. So what do they do with all this debris? Well, uh, people have been trying to take it to the dumps, but they close them all. What? Uh, we need these answers. Commercial haulers want answers so they can help homeowners clear storm debris. County says it's working to find another solution. So what is the solution? Open up the landfills. Uh, Pineless County leaders say they are working to find other solutions to help commercial haulers after closing the county's dump site to storm debris on Tuesday. That day, the county provided one location for commercial haulers to bring storm debris. Wednesday, two more were added. On Thursday, Chris Nemeth of Big Dumps Trailer Rentals told ABC News um, the barriers need to be removed before the Tampa Bay area gets inundated with more rain. All of the debris that's laying out is going to flood. It's going to end up spread out everywhere. It's going to end up in our waterways. I have questions about when we bring in government contracts. And, you know, there's funding issues and stuff like that. Why? You know, we're already cleaned up, working in that direction. Why would we put it back? That's why we need these answers. It's why I told people to reach out to local government's officials to see why they could get those answers pushed forward. Yeah, FEMA came in and they've basically taken over everything and said, no citizen help, no drones, no one's allowed in unless you're FEMA's, like, work for us. No help for no one. And they do this every time every project gets taken over by FEMA. Now, is it because, like, they're incompetent and they're not organized and it's just this generation of people who they're hiring that, like, don't care and aren't good at the jobs? Or is this something more? Good news, guys. Kamal is finally giving money to victims of the hurricane. Praise the Lord. Uh, oh, wait. It's only $750 each. I mean, per household. Each household. Not per person. And only to people already on EBT or government assistance. Uh, and you have to apply for it online and receive it online if you're approved. If you don't have internet or a phone because of the hurricane, it's too bad. Uh, but don't worry, uh, Secretary Marcus said FEMA is out of money anyway. What? No money left for the rest of the hurricane season. I guess the nearly $1 billion, yes, billion, that FEMA spent on welcome centers for illegal aliens in the past two years drained the hurricane cash stash pretty quick. She believes the government hates you. Democrats running the government hate you. And I mean, like, it's hard to deny that after seeing this. Look, Department of Homeland Security announces $380 million in additional funding to communities receiving migrants. FEMA awards $110 million to the Emergency Food and Shelter Program assisting migrants. New York City to get $104.6 million from FEMA for asylum seekers. And more and more and more and more. Well, Biden's obviously under... Uh, fire as FEMA lacks funds for Hurricane Helene after spending billions on migrants. Taxpayer funds that no one had necessarily agreed to to do, and a lot of people are against it. Currently, no funds are available to assist 150,000 American citizens seeking federal, sorry, federal aid after Hurricane Helene impacted their homes. FEMA does not have the funds to make it through the season. On Wednesday, October 2nd, Department of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas acknowledged 
the situation. And there's Biden's head about ready to explode with uppers to keep him alive. Last week, Congress approved an additional $20 billion funding bill in anticipation of hurricane season. However, this may not be enough as Hurricane Helene devastated Appalachia and the South claiming nearly 200 lives with more storms on the horizon. Yeah, hurricane season. Here we go. Well, FEMA's come out and said, don't, don't, don't talk behind our back and gossip. Let us tell you the truth, okay? FEMA. Uh, FEMA does not have enough money to provide disaster assistance for clean. Fact. Here it is. FEMA has enough money right now for immediate response and recovery needs. If you were affected by healing, do not hesitate to apply for disaster assistance, and there's a variety of help available for different needs. And tons of people are being denied. Go on TikTok, go on Twitter, whatever. Look up like a FEMA denial, and it'll just shock you. FEMA is asking for cash donations and turning away volunteers. That's a rumor. Fact, this is false. FEMA does not ask for or generally accept any cash donations or volunteers for disaster response. No, but they're shutting down all the other ones. Any citizen-led ones are saying, do not do this. Well, they want to be sure it's not a scam. You know, we'll handle all the cash. There's no one else who's honest. All right, rumor, funding for FEMA disaster response was diverted to support international efforts or border-related issues. This is false. No money is being diverted from disaster response needs. FEMA's disaster response efforts and individual assistance is funded through Disaster Relief Fund, which is dedicated fund for disaster efforts. Disaster Relief Fund money has not been diverted to other non-disaster related funds. Okay. So what happened to all the money? You didn't have enough? I don't know. FEMA's confiscating donations for survivors. Rumor. Rumors about FEMA turning away donations, stopping trucks or vehicles with donations, confiscating and seizing supplies often spread after disaster. They, they're false, totally false. Any videos you may have seen, there must be AI. Absolutely. Must be. Good one. Thanks for that one. FEMA will only provide $750 to disaster survivors for their recovery. This is false. One type of assistance that is often approved quickly after you apply serious needs assistance, which is $750 to help pay for essential items like food, water, baby formula, breastfeeding supplies, medication, other emergency supplies. So shut it down. Six-year-old guest at Sean Diddy Combs, white party recounts open drugs, naked women everywhere. Okay, so I'm not saying anything about six-year-olds and their memory. I'm not sure how old he was or is now. Is he still six? Anyway, let's dive in. Let's check this out. This looks insane. Sean Diddy Combs, white parties in the Hamptons were not known for being family friendly, which uh, Justin uh, Litovsky, now 30. Okay, so he's recalling something from 24 years ago. So let's get out the salt shaker, sprinkle a couple of grains on this. Uh, white parties in the Hamptons were not known for being family friendly. No, the unknowingly attended Diddy's July 3rd, 1999 afternoon barbecue only to find it loaded with revelers literally partying, partying like it was 99 whatever there's a sean combs with a then friend jay-z i remember a lot of weed and a bunch of topless women in the pool and around the pool i actually wanted to get in anytime we went anywhere with the pool i wanted to swim of course he's six i didn't know if it, if tits were a good thing or a bad thing but i hoped to jump in there he is being fondled by P. Diddler. Good lord. Um, Lil Kim. Donna Karen. DKNY. Some women dressed up like angels. The mother of young Justin Maya Levitsky did not have much to mull over. I did not give my son the opportunity to get in there. There were bottles everywhere and naked women. I wasn't sure if this was appropriate or normal. I wondered about how kids were allowed into the party to begin with. He brought them there. Guests included a Cohiba puffing Jay-Z, Platinum Trust, Little Kim, Donna Karen, and Tyson Beckford with uh, a not very child appropriate t-shirt that blasted F. Giuliani, then New York's law and order favoring mayor. And there's an image of some uh, scantily clad women. Looks like they're doing some uh, bird shots or breast shots there or something. Um, interesting. There's DiCaprio. A couple other individuals. Diddy would go on to set a kid curfew at future parties if child welfare came here in 30 minutes. That's on y'all. He joked from his Hamptons balcony in 2007. My kids are downstairs. 15 minutes, the kids have to go. I don't remember seeing one other child, he said. I normally uh, the type to want to go play with other kids. Yeah, so his mother brought him there with a bunch of people. 
uh, celebrities, so she probably wanted to get some clout or whatever and let her little kid run around with these uh, deplorables. Anyway, whatever. I had a heart attack at 24, part one. Alarming rise of super fit, slim young people suffering heart attacks as experts reveal theories for the surge. Okay, okay, okay. Let's check it out. Heart attacks were once thought of as a disease of age, but worrying new data shows they are increasing in healthy young adults. Roughly 0.3% of Americans aged 18 to 44 had a heart attack in 2019, but last year they rose to 0.5%, or 1 in 200. Imagine that. So, you know, my class size is only 200 in high school. Most are 2,000, so that's 10 of your classmates having a heart attack by 44. Yikes. While that may seem like a relatively low number, it represents a 66% increase in cases in just four years, hmm. which doctors call alarming. It also means that one in five heart attack patients are now younger than 40. Yikes. A number of factors are thought to be at play, including rampant drug use, obesity, sedentary lifestyles, and bad diets. But the timing strongly implies uh, <clears throat> something else might have had uh, some influence there. Viruses are known to cause inflammation in the body that can damage the heart or lead to blood clots. Depression, anxiety, and stress also surged among young people during the lockdowns. And all three have been linked to uh, cardiac infarctions. Yeah. There's a young lady. Chloe Burke went into cardiac arrest at 21 while cheering on the University of Houston. She's now educating others about cardiac arrest. Good for her. Dr. Deepak Bhatt, the director of Mount Sinai Fuster Heart Hospital, told today there are definitely more younger people coming in with heart attacks. There's data to back that up. What's driving that is more controversial. There were millions fewer visits to the doctors during the early years of the pandemic, which means chronic conditions that may contribute to heart disease risk went unnoticed. Of course, yeah. Couldn't get to see the doctor. That's why I'm dying of a heart attack. An increase in the number of young people developing type 2 diabetes, which is associated with thicker and stickier blood, which raises the risk of blood clots and, uh, in turn, heart attacks. Yeah, maybe it's too much sugar. Talked about it. It's the diet. Studies have shown that once in the body, viruses can cause the heart to become inflamed, a condition known as myocarditis, leading to damage that makes it harder to pump blood around the body. Or time extreme cases that can damage the organ to a point it becomes too weak to adequately pump enough blood for the rest of your body, causing heart failure. All right, and then they go on to talk about some other things like carrots and injecting those into your body and how uh, those can be a problem. Not going to get banned. So close to being banned. Garth Brooks accused of raping makeup artist who worked for his wife, Trissy Yearwood, in new lawsuit. What? Garth Brooks, the heart of country. Garth Brooks has been accused of raping makeup artists who worked for his wife, Trisha Yearwood, in a new lawsuit. The Grammy-winning artist, 62, was accused of sexual assault and battery in a complaint filed in state court in California on Thursday. The plaintiff, who filed anonymously as Jane Rowe, alleges the country icon brought her with him to Los Angeles for a Grammy event honoring the R&B singer Sam Moore in May 2019. Ooh. In the suit, the plaintiff claims the Friends in Low Places singer booked only one hotel suite for the, both of them. And when she asked for separate accommodation, he would not provide one. Oh, no, 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 no. They're all booked up. I could only get the honeymoon suite. Sorry. She accuses him of then accosting her in the doorway, nude, hauling her into another room, dangling her upside down by the ankles, and raping her in court documents obtained by DailyMail.com. Wow. Brutish behavior by the once known singer Chris Gaines. DailyMail.com has reached out to the representative for Brooks for comment. However, Brooks is said to have previously denied the accuser's claim. Before the makeup artist filed her lawsuit, Brooks was aware of her allegations and anonymously filed to fight back using the name John Doe. Jane Doe was originally hired to do hair and makeup for Yearwood in 99, and Brooks eventually enlisted her to do so for him in 2017. Well, maybe he was like, hey, listen, I remember that girl back then, you know. Maybe we had a little something, something. Doesn't seem like it. In her new lawsuit, the makeup artist alleged that Brooks would send her sexually explicit text messages, tell her about his sexual fantasies, and discuss sex with her. Well, if these are uh, text-based and they came from his phone, and you know, that's red hands. 
Right there, she also accused him of exposing his buttocks and genitals to her on more than one occasion and repeatedly changing clothes in front of her. Makeup artist, you know, girl, I gotta change. Like, you know, it's in between sets. Like, we'll see. Dubious. She claims she was at Brooks's house waiting for him to meet her so that she could apply his makeup when he emerged naked and erect from the shower. Well, you know, hot showers tend to do that. I don't know what kind of excuse he's going to come up with that. But uh, there's lots of excuses going around for this uh, little one. Garth Brooks keeps getting accused of being a serial killer on social media. Here's why. There's the stare of a alleged murderer. Just when you thought social media couldn't get dumber, Twitter is now X and people won't stop claiming Garth Brooks is a serial killer over on the dumpster fire that is Elon Musk's platform. Okay, so here is obviously a left-leaning individual writing um, an article. Yep, you read that right. The country music superstar is being called a serial killer over there. It's relentless and is clearly not based on anything that is factual. No, it's alleged. Speculated. All right, so what's the deal? Uh, Brooks has found himself in the middle of controversy uh, lately for daring to suggest that he might serve Bud Light in his new Nashville bar and having the gall to ask his fans to support refugees in the Ukraine. But this is clearly more serious and apparently predates all of that. So what the heck? Man, we are running late on time. So how did we get here with Brooks? Mentions being flooded by the unfounded claims. Well, according to multiple reports, it all began with comedian Tom Segura and Brooks' 2018 concert tour announcement. At the end of the video, Brooks says, Let's get physical playing music with a smile. Segura then reportedly jokes that Brooks looked like he had killed multiple people before and had grown legs and taken off from there with a conspiracy that his tour dates coincided with multiple missing people in reports even being added to the story. That has led fans of Segura to show up in Brooks's post to ask, where are the bodies, Garth? Many people, it seems, are in on the joke, but there are other people who genuinely and unbelievably seem to believe there are facts behind this, and uh, you will easily find people on Musk's platform claiming Brooks is a serial killer. Yeah, so, I mean, that's up to you guys. If you want to go ahead and find out all about that, go for it. Interesting in light of the allegations that he is a rapist. TGIF people, we ran a little bit late today. Sorry, mask coming off in a couple weeks. We're going to do a little Halloween special. So tune into that. We'll put on a timer. Sigma Tiger signing out.